What do you guys know about the garbage? Can you talk about the garbage? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I feel like I mean, I... there's the Gracie guard, which is a jiu-jitsu move. <laughs> there's rubber like? guard. Gracie guard is a pretty basic guard. You know, like 10 Planet Jiu-Jitsu guard, like Eddie Bravo's guard, that's a rubber guard. And that's with one foot over and post. Okay, good. There's those guards. <laughs> oh, I, the, I mean, let's talk about Hayden. That's really, I think that's really like a, a Lucas Bryant, Nathan Morno's topic. Like, I mean, I think you have some interaction with them, but I feel like Audrey is dealing with throughout the season with her own monsters that even though she's aware of the guard and dealt with them a lot last season, it's kind of something else. Like, she's more focused on the Colorado kid and the hunter. The, the, the writers wanted to introduce what could potentially be almost like the troubled mafia. And that's what the guard is. Um, Ooh, and like uh, you didn't hear that one? I didn't come up with that. <laughs> okay, I did come up with it, but I'm giving, trying to give the writers credit. No, um, but you know, the idea was to be able to introduce an entity into the show that could, on one hand, be altruistically good, and at the same time, very, very corruptible. So as we move forward in, in the next, you know, hopefully several seasons, we have something, you know, that that is a combatant to us. You know, as we as we see this team and this family grow, we needed someone to do battle with. We had a great, you know, um, entity at one point in the Rev, you know, in the Reverend Driscoll, and it was time to introduce the, the next version of that. And, and it's, it's one of the most fascinating things about the show, I think, is that although we think the troubled are evil or bad, the truth is most of the troubled are not. They are outcasts, they are minorities, they are, you know, all those symbolisms that is really what it's about. So the guard was sort of the same thing, although they appear to be the authority and appear to be righteous, they may be in some regards, but they also may not be. And I think we find out a lot this season, um, a little bit more of the inner workings of the guard and that it may be a bigger thing than we think. So I think that Audrey finds that fascinating. Um, and that's all I can say about it. Jesse that. Ventura has a lot of thoughts about the guard. <laughs> he's, he's convinced it's a conspiracy. I hope Jesse Ventura doesn't see this. Uh, Let me ask Duke. No, it's it's uh, it's been a really fun uh, storyline for me. And um, hello, hi Anita. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Glad you could finally make it. Nice to be here as well. It's fine. We were waiting for like <laughs> half hour for you. Well, you know, I had really to look pretty. You know, just Anita, would you like yeah. a chair? All right, I will move the chair over. I was just putting the other one. No, here, hang on. I'm going to... Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so, uh, anyways, um, I think it's... the. I got to say, I don't know that I... To be frank, I don't know that I saw how good the writers were at creating this world in its conflicts and its um, uh, dichotomies. I know I was like, okay, there's Audrey, and then she likes this cop Nathan, and then there's kind of this, you know, criminal guy Duke, and she kind of likes him, and there's a kind of a thing. And I'm realizing how m much more sophisticated it is, and how much deeper it goes. And I think part of that, you know, I, I, I would like to think has to do with us as actors. Mm -hmm. But I think they've written these really special things that are, as, as life are, we're always faced with contradictions and. and I think Duke is is given this, you know, power, curse, gift. I mean, it's sort of you summed it up right there. It, it's all these things. So it's, as an actor, it's really fun to play off of all of those things. The show has a, a lot of mysteries, uh, largely centered on you, of course, but with everybody, and, and they unfold at their own pace. Do you guys, as actors, do you know where everything is going, or do you sometimes have to go to the writers and say, "What's going on? I need to know." Yeah, we know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to come. 
We know nothing, <laughs> ever. We try to find things out, but... I mean, that's kind of one of the uh, beautiful mysteries, if you will, of television. It's sort of this, you know, unfolding Pandora's box. Not just our show, every show, because writers may have a plan and end game, all this stuff, but how, how they sort of get there, like life, you know, is, uh, is changeable and is a variable by the network and by how the audience responds and all, all of these things. So, I mean, we'd really like to know some information and sometimes we ask and sometimes they come and they say, hey, do you want to know this? And we're like, uh-uh, don't tell me. Um, but, but no, we don't, we don't know. Oh, and, and so polite of you. That, um, <laughs> that I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm a diplomat. And, uh, but that actually has been kind of a good thing for the character of Audrey, because she doesn't know, a, she doesn't have a clue about anything, and anything she does know ends up getting ripped out from underneath her at any given time, so it ends up kind of working out, because I get just as, as pissed off as she does. I feel like I live in this tiny town, and everybody else knows what's going on, and I'm never told anything. And I'm asking everybody, here's the mean part, and nobody will say yeah. anything. It's, it's a and really they just fun look game, at each though. Other a lot, Cause they, they actually tell me everything. Exactly. See? No, I'm kidding, that's not true at all. I know. There there are there are two very distinct schools of thought in Havenland. There are those in the camp of the actors shouldn't know anything. We should yes. surprise them every day. And then there are, well, I think pretty much just the actors on the other camp. That only the actors would be in the other camp. In the other camp. No, and Sean, Sean Pillar, our, one of our executive producers, Sean Sometimes. Pillar. He, he does. Other. We think that we should know everything because it's our job as actors to create the layers. The, the layers and the suspense and know that if we're starting here and going there that we can weave ideas in and out and reveal a little bit or to hold a little bit back. But that that war has not been uh, won or settled yet. That doesn't always happen. That's not how we do it around here, yeah. okay? You know what I'm saying? So we try our best, but... Where did, where did that accent come from? I don't know. We were doing Russian earlier. I know. Can we do the rest of the interview with the Russian we can. accent? Okay. Both those questions bring up a larger thing, which is the mythology show that shows the mythology really seems to have taken off with modern audiences. I, I honestly think it's because of technology. I mean, to be truthfully honest, we don't really ever, we don't really live in a world now where you really have to tune in every single week. And, it, you know, we are very rarely... But you should. You should. You, no, you should. You Live. You should. Because we're still in if a ratings... If you rating, have a Nielsen box. Because we're still in a ratings world where that matters. But, I mean, it, I think by the nature of how television has developed, like, it used to be really important to get those single viewers that would like, I know, I'm like, it's like a World War III out there. I know, that's a awesome. crazy that's setup. There, so. Crazy setup. But um, it's not like you're flipping the channel and you're only going to stay on that one. Like, now you can get a season and you're like, oh, I want to watch that whole season. It's like reading the whole book instead of just being like, oh, I think I'm going to like this chapter or this chapter or this chapter. So I think the long-form storytelling, I mean, television is in its golden age in that sense, you know? So we all, we're really excited that our show is getting to lean more towards the mythology, but I think people that want, you know, the little individual stories of the week, they get that too. This was brought up in panel, but the one thing that slightly disconcerted me was watching Audrey show terror or fear, because in the season premiere we see her actually afraid by this man who's kidnapped her, and I thought, well, hasn't she been kidnapped before? And then in second season, then we actually see her almost crying, and she's afraid, and Duke goes up and gets a screwdriver and thinks he's the cop with the gun. Shouldn't she go to see who might yeah. be coming? So how do you feel about this new development in your character? I love it. It was one of the main things that was presented to me when I was there sitting trying to get answers from our writers. Was what? So what's her arc this season? What's the... What's the where is she going? And I didn't really get anything, except for that there would be an external threat and something that would really shake her up that she would feel was always around. And uh, how does she handle that threat? Instead of her just trying to figure out her, her mystery of herself, like how does she react when there's something actually not just going after people that she can help, but her specifically, you know? 
And I think it's interesting. I mean, it happens in her apartment. It happens in a place that she's safe, uh, right in the backyard of, you know, one of her best friends. And she is used to being protected in a sense, and all of that's stripped away now too. So I really, of course, as an actress, love that opportunity to show that side of her. I think I think this season really uh, gave us a taste of that. Why are you being all bashful? Uh, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be coy. No, yeah, calculated or careful, cautious. <clears throat> um, I want. I want to hear you answer this question. Well, no, I think there was. A, you are going to see. You're gonna see, I mean, we already know where it's going. We, we wrapped filming the season, so I'm trying to answer this question without already knowing. Right, right. We, I know exactly where it's going, but in well, saying that, exactly. yeah, <laughs> in saying I, I, I that. Get some spoiler information in here. You wouldn't want us to, though. Everybody thinks well, they'd want us to, but you wouldn't. Yeah, but the, 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 the thing is, Duke and, and Audrey's relationship is, is going to change change drastically over the next even few episodes. We st already started us in the beginnings of that. Yeah. But, and, and also knowing where the season went, I gotta hand it to the writers again. They've now kind of really just opened up this new door. Mm -hmm. And there, the, the potential of where it could go, I honestly don't know. And there's a lot more space and places for it to go, actually. So now thinking about your question, being able to remove myself from knowing what I already know about this season, I would like to really see these characters have to, to, to make a choice. I think choices are always forced upon them, whether it be with Audrey and Duke, or Audrey and Nathan, or Duke and Nathan, the choices are always sort of forced upon them. They're always sort of in effect of what's been happening. And I think it would be really neat. And I, I think in some ways, Aud Audrey, uh, Emily's character, did in some ways, we've seen at the beginning of this season with, with, with Nathan, she sort of made a decision about where that relationship was going to be allowed to go or not. Mm -hmm. But... I would, I would like us to start to sort of take the emotional, you know, roller coaster that we've been going on and start to say, yes, I want to take this this place, or no, I will no longer engage in this. And we've never really seen that. We've just sort of seen them bouncing off the walls and all this craziness that's going on. So I think along those same lines, like, because you, while you're talking, I was just reminded of a whole other part of their art. I think that... Like, like he's saying, there's so much flirting that happens between the two of them and this really great complex friendship that happens between the two of them. What do you mean flirting? There is. There's always been that. You flirt with me? Yes. Audrey flirts with Duke. Yes. <laughs> but, but what I, you know, from the, it's funny, the choice, like what he's saying in terms of making a choice, like. I think the girly side of that for me is like, what, I want them to face something. Like I, I don't want them to like face it and then have something intervene or take them out of that. Like I want them to have to face something head on. And I mean, they sort of have to do that in this season, but I mean, I want them to face it and deal with it and sit with dealing with it and see where that kind of puts them. I mean, not in, I mean, a bigger way, I mean, because it's boring to sit and just talk about it, but I mean, I want that to be their reality, you know, to like have to face it instead of dance around it all the time. And I also want some answers as to what is this connection between them. Yeah. Beyond, yeah. beyond like, yeah. as just becoming friends or having this yeah. relationship as people. There's this, there's obviously this, you know, understanding you know, of each other, I think generational you know yeah. connection yeah. of I mean why was my character as a little kid at the beach with her right when the color when they found the Colorado kids body right like, what we've never really yeah, gotten yeah, yeah, to yeah. that That's obviously good. our families have a longer I mean history there's questions about that so I, I think you know 
all those things. So take There's this a lot. interview, bold this part, and send it to the writers on Twitter, and maybe yeah. something will come of this wonderful round table. My other question then is, well, I didn't quite understand what happened in episode three, where Audrey actually does say, I need you to kill this man. Mm -hmm. And Duke, for season one, we see him as this rambling man, and he's a dangerous man, and if danger's there, he's gonna handle it. So I almost didn't understand Duke's hesitance when there's a man killing his children. This is the question. Ooh. And there's a man yeah. who's almost dying, and he can actually do something and save this person without, it's more immersive. Uh, so, okay. I'm so happy to talk about this. Because <laughs> I read the script of that episode and I went, I don't get it. I was like, why is this a big deal? I'm like, this makes no sense to me. I'm like, you're wrong. Like, Duke's killed people before. And then Matt McGinnis, our showrunner, who, who really, he, he came on second season. Mm -hmm. um, and was really the showrunner this yeah. season. Yeah. Um, he was like, what do you mean Duke's killed people? I'm like, Duke's killed people. He's been in trouble. He's had things. Like, he's not a sweet guy. I'm like, even in season one, when I thought there was somebody behind a wall, I pulled a trigger on the guy's face. I'm like, he's he is a morally questionable person in some ways. Although he may have a good heart, but regardless, he's killed people. This is a, not a hard choice. This guy is a killer. He's going to die anyways. It's going to... It's gonna save his family. Why wouldn't he just kill them? This is stupid. I was pissed. And then Sam, in his wisdom, and Matt, in his wisdom, said, you missed the point. And I'm like, what are you talking about? They said, it's about his choice. His whole reality right now is fighting this so-called destiny, is fighting th this presumed role that he's supposed to play and all this act does it's not the killing part that's hard for him it is the inability to get out of the maze it's 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 it's, it's winding up in the same place over and over that he has no choice and in the idea that that he doesn't have control of his fate which is all he's been holding on to is that if I don't want to be this guy, I don't have to be this guy and I can stop from being this guy and it, it, it just keeps getting pushed in his face. So that became really what the, the turmoil was about. It wasn't about just killing a human being because I agree, I don't think Duke, given the right circumstances, has any qualms about killing. I know that may sound harsh, but no, no. I don't think he does. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, manipulated him Absolutely. in that situation. Absolutely, yeah. The betrayal of that, I think, was a huge part of it. Absolutely. You know, that's... Do you feel like Audrey's making amends as a result? Because she's broken his heart. She's, that trust is no longer there that he implicitly had for her, that she would always be good enough. I think that this winding time clock for her, that she has X amount of days until the whatever happens, and whatever happens, really takes the camera lens in her life and cranks it into focus and makes things very black and white for her. She only has this much time left and so what can she do with that time she's had? It's as if she's been giving a given, a, we kept saying like a, a cancer diagnosis. I have this many days left, what am I going to do with that time? And as much as it forces her to make these decisions regarding, we see her fumble with that, which is what I love. It's not clean. You know, she's like, okay. It sucks that I have to ask him to do this, but it's going to save so many X amount of people. So with the time that I have, I would save all these children and all these people the greater good, you know, moral question. So um, I think you saw her a bit in last night's episode fumble to make amends with him, and she deals with the... He doesn't let her off the hook easily at all. I remember several beats, like several episodes later, them talking about our relationship. I'm like, are you aware of the look that he gave me at the end? Like, he's not okay with me. This is not just reset the button at the beginning of every episode. We are not in a good place, you know? So I think that there was a lot of fumbling for her. And I think it causes her to be off her rocker a bit. She's, she's not in a good place now with either the two people that she could always be in a good place with. So I think that's good television. In my opinion, good storytelling.
I concur. You guys are going to be much happier with these other guys. They're so much better. <laughs> yeah, sure.